Hey everyone, so on the weekend I bought a um, homemade rotisserie off another guy to suit an FC or an FE. Upon my uh, trying to adapt it to, to get on the car, I had to do a few modifications, plus I wanted to make it a little bit more of, um, versatile. Uh, so I've put some wheels on it, I've put some extra bracing on, and I adapted some rear um, bumper bar irons to be able to connect the, the, the bottom bracket on. But basically it was as I got it. Um, shout out to Tim for, for that. Um, thanks, mate. Look out. So here you go. First time I'm gonna spin it around. So I'm gonna go, we'll go this way for starters. So you can see the roof. So there we go. Now I'm holding that at the moment. I'm gonna plan on drilling a couple of holes to lock it in. And then if I go back the other way, Not a lot of effort to do this. Just give it a little bit of a push. Now the intention is now is so that I can get access to all of the underfloor. I can give it a really good clean up now. Give it a, um, a good, I don't know, um, de-dust, blow it off. Clean it right up, ready for some paint. I'm gonna give it some KBS. There, I've got to do some rust, small rust repairs and then um, it'll be getting a black KBS all over the base of it. That'll seal the whole bottom floor of the floor. Then I'm still reluctant. I don't know whether I'll put some, I don't know, uh, dead in a tight material or just leave it um, painted. So yeah, handy little thing. Probably, I'm gonna say it would have cost, at a guess, 350 bucks maybe, $400 to build. Um, it's caster wheels from Bunnings. Uh, couple of, you just gotta get the right, offcuts of pipe from scrap joint. Um, from a scrap steel place and yeah, and away you go. So, happy days. Okay, so further to that, um, I'll give you a rundown on the materials here. So this one here is 40 mil by 40 mil RHS. Uh, I'm gonna say it's probably a three mil thick. It's a bit thicker than your standard. Um, and then I've got just some inch black pipe, steel pipe for the bracing. Now I could have used any other sort of bracing. I took the braces off that were a bit of angle and I changed it to pipe. I probably didn't need to. I got some black uh, square tube I could have used as well. Um, now that is, looks like two and two and two and a half inch um, steel pipe, one to go inside the other. Uh, a little, there's my a bit of three quarter bracing that I put on as well. Um, and then just 40 by 40 now, this component here where it, I just used two bumper irons and this was in my parts and I guarantee, I'm pretty well sure that most people don't have them in their parts. If they do, happy days. Um, and I've, it took me probably a good hour and a half to cut two hours mucking around trying to get the, the piece of tube all ground out to suit the shape of the um, iron. And so that if I ever want to later reuse the irons, I can. I can um, just cut that off and grind it back and the, and the, the bumper iron can be reused. But um, yeah, it took a little while to get it right. I, I just made a short stub up first and then um, once I was happy with the angle and it was level, square and everything parallel to the car, then I just tacked it on, welded it up, cut, cut it off to a two inch stub rust, rough, roughly and then welded the bracket on that's now attached to the frame. And this is on the rear section, so if it, um, the other component to this that you've got to get right is this height here off the, uh, off the floor or in the body line of the car. The body line of the car is going to be, and if I go down the other end, show you that. So the body line of the car is this little component here. That's the true center of the car, funnily enough. And it happens to be where the radio bolt would go through to pick up the back of the radio if you had a factory original radio. So if you line up the center of this pipe here, center line down that, 
So to get the center line, I uh, set the car up level. So I set the level on the sill just here. And when, once I had the car level front and back, I set up my laser. So around here, I put my laser on the wall. That laser shot through from one end to the other. And then I could get a height of what I needed at the other end to get the setup so it was true. Now I'm glad this is another good reason of buying it off um, Tim was that I could, he had already had those center lines pretty well marked and centered to say the bumper irons or um, the subframe here. So this level, this part here come down across like that. Now, I did have problems lining my bolts up when I went to put the bracket on. So I did a little manipulating here by cutting it off, put a bit of plate in, welding it all up and actually gave me the right spacing. I needed to get it all set right. Um, I put a level on this part here, the, this part here that coming out once I had the car level, set that up level, set this up level. So the car was true, set through the center. So when I, when I spin it, now it's not as taxing to try and turn the car over, spin it round. So yeah, it's much easier to go by that there. I remember when I first did my V8 car, um, I built a, a road history for that. Wasn't aware of the center line. I think I had a center line with the bumpers and oh God, it was heavy to lift and spin around. Um, the other part of that is being center of the car means you can actually do a full 360. Whereas my other one, one it sat up really high, but then when you did swing it down, it actually nearly hit the ground, but you couldn't go right around, way around. This one should be able to do that now. So um, much better set up the way I've done it. I'm much happier now with the way it's gonna work. And the fact that I've put it on wheels, you can see them on the wheels. I can lock though, I bought locking wheels too, so I can lock them and they're all locked now. So that when I'm working on the car, the car won't move. But when I am uh, want to move it around to, you know, move it into a different location to do some work or whatever, um, I can just unlock it and move it. One of my other intentions is that I can, I've bolted those brackets onto the, um, the wheels onto the uh, bottom of the frame. So if I want to later, which I might want to do, is wheel the car outside and onto the gravel, um, then I can change the wheels over for pneumatic tyres or similar that's going to make it more friendly to work on gravel um, and I can wheel it out there so it's just a matter of jacking the frame up undoing the bolts bolt the new ones on and then I can move it out the outside I can blast it I can paint it I can do all the things you that's messy that you can do outside um, and then I can wheel it back in put the other wheels back on so they're to suit a hard floor and that makes it easier to move the car on a hard floor so that's the progress on the wagon um, slowly getting there, slowly but surely, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Cheers. See you later. This is Scotty. Bye.